Good evening. I'm Dr. Greenbrier Almond, and thank you for joining us on our program, Tender Loving Care. Each week on Channel 3, I'm happy to talk about this interface between Christianity and medicine. And tonight, I'm going to be talking about the healthy benefits of giving thanks. Of course, this is the Thanksgiving season, and it's one of the most precious times of the year uh, for many of us, as this is the time that our families come together, and uh, some of us will be traveling to visit families. Other times, families will be coming here. But the whole point of it is, is to join together and, and to give thanks. And uh, it's very, very important to do that, not only for our health, but the health of our nation, and of course, the health of our families. And I want to, I want to begin with a couple of historic proclamations. I've tended to use these over the past several years, uh, not going back all 37 years that I've been on TV doing this, but, but the last couple of years, I've gone back to the words of George Washington and Abraham Lincoln as they set up proclamations for Thanksgiving. I think there's wisdom in doing that, and then it, it, it leads us then into a discussion about how healthy it is to give thanks. Uh, George Washington, uh, back in 1789, writes, Whereas it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey His will, to be grateful for His benefits, and humbly to implore His protection and favor. Now, therefore, I do appoint Thursday, the 26th day of November, 1789, that we may all unite to render unto him our sincere and humble thanks for his kind care and protection. <coughs> Obviously, uh, George Washington, as the uh, first president and, uh, of course, the, the father of our country, uh, is right to say we need to unite and thank God for our care and our protection. Uh, and that we do this uh, because it is um, his favor and his um, protection is what makes our life possible. Can you imagine at this time of the year uh, what it must have been like for the uh, pilgrims to come here and, and perhaps to have lost half their number just getting here, the first uh, season was very, very hard, but gathering in the fall and thanking God for providence, for his, his providing, and, and uh, truly grateful. And, and God saw them through, and of course our nation began to grow. Uh, we have the beginning after a long uh, fought war of independence from England, uh, we have George Washington leading us and saying, let us um, acknowledge the providence of Almighty God to obey His will and be grateful for His benefits. Humbly implore His protection and favor. Uh, so if that was true in the beginning, it remains true today. In a little bit, we're going to look at some other foundational scriptures that I'm sure that, that uh, George Washington must have read. Uh, looking at the Bible and making, before he made this proclamation, use the words that he did. But let us turn now to the words of Abraham Lincoln. Certainly at a trying time, a time of war, uh, our nation was clearly divided. And yet he said to us, uh, we often forget the source from which the blessing of fruitful years and healthful skies come. No human wisdom hath devised, nor hath any mortal hand worked out these great things. <coughs> they are gracious gifts of the Most High God. I'm talking about the grace of God now. I therefore invite my fellow citizens in every part of the United States to observe the last Thursday of November as a day of thanksgiving and praise to our beneficent Father who dwells in the heavens. <coughs> so, of Abraham Lincoln has said that he probably read the scriptures more than any other president, and uh, he dwelt on the scriptures. And again, as we compare in a minute or two some scriptures, Old Old Testament scriptures, you'll see uh, the roots of, of why he's saying that we need to be thankful to for these gracious gifts that do come from a most high God. And um, the United States, he emphasizes the United States, um, all people, all people coming before God is an important thing to do. And um, 
I'm glad that both our first president and then perhaps our greatest president saw fit to proclaim a Thanksgiving. I think, again, it's a very, very healthy thing to do. Uh, some, some other wisdom uh, to this, and uh, just to reflect on the source material, I know whenever I uh, practice medicine, uh, I need to go back to medical text. I need to go back to uh, the research articles that uh, prove uh, the treatment that I'm about to recommend is healthy. And I'm sure that giving thanks is healthy. I'm sure that uh, getting together as a family and uh, sharing with one another and uh, humbling ourselves before God is healthy. Uh, but let's look at the source material for that. Uh, in Isaiah, the uh, 25th chapter, verses 6 through 8, it's recorded uh, almost as if it were West Virginia, but I think it's, of course, Jerusalem up on a mountaintop it says, on this mountain, we could say in the hills of West Virginia, uh, the Almighty uh, will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best meats and the finest wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, that cloud that around the mountain, he calls it a shroud, but sometimes we're in the clouds, aren't we? We don't, we don't see things clearly uh, until, we, until we pause and reflect and, and are grateful. We've all survived a year. If you're here, if you're watching the program and, and here I am broadcasting live, we survived a year. That's, that's a blessing, isn't it? Even in itself, uh, you can see the clouds coming apart to show that. Uh, the sheet that covers all nations, he says, uh, he will swallow up death forever. Again, this is a prophetic word. Uh, through Jesus Christ, years later, death is swallowed, but it's prophesied this would happen. The sovereign Lord will wipe away all tears from all faces. Again, there's no distinction here. This is everyone, everyone. Uh, just like a father would, would uh, have no favorites in his family, so God uh, doesn't have favorites. Uh, we, we, we know the United States is blessed. We know that Israel is blessed. We know that... Uh, Many, many nations are blessed on earth, but he has no favorites. All nations uh, deserve to give thanks to God and, and uh, for the creation and for the world that we live in. And uh, he'll wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove the disgrace of his people from all the earth. So that's a sweeping promise, uh, only one that God could make. Uh, God being all-powerful, all-knowing, all-present, uh, he can make that. Another, another um, reason why George Washington or Abraham Lincoln would come up with a Thanksgiving proclamation is also from Isaiah, the 45th chapter, just a few chapters left, 20 chapters later, the 22nd through the 24th verse. Turn to me and be saved. All you ends of the earth, the whole earth, come together. Remember now, the United States is a melting pot. We, we have just come through an election <clears throat> in which we realized, of course, the increase in the Latino population, many, many Asians coming to America, of course, the Afro-American population. We have the, the traditional white population from the European countries, uh, the Mediterranean countries. All of us from the ends of the earth have come together to these United States. And, and uh, Israel, or Isaiah, is recognizing this uh, and, and proclaiming a proclamation. It's time for all to be saved, for all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is no other. Isaiah is speaking for God. There is no other. By myself I have sworn, my mouth has uttered in all integrity a word that will not be revoked. Before me every knee will bow, by, every by me every tongue will swear. They will say of me, in the Lord alone are righteousness and strength. The harvest comes, and this is this is the harvest time, and and uh, the ancient um, Israel nation Isaiah is writing about the people. Of course, they depended on their harvest. Uh, we are a little bit separated from farming, though we do a lot of farming here in West Virginia, and we have great potential to do more. But but uh, at the end of a season of growth, uh, when when the food is gathered in, uh, people need to remember that it is God who provided the rain at the right time, the sun at the right time, the quality of the seed, the quality of the earth, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the backbone uh, 
the elbow grease, to weed the garden, all those things that came together, and of course, the effort to harvest and, and take everything in. This is all cause for praise, and, and it all is a blessing from God, a gracious gift. <clears throat> One more from Isaiah as we reflect on Thanksgiving uh, through the scriptures, and, and uh, I think going back to the roots of what uh, Abraham Lincoln and, and George Washington said, in Isaiah 49, the sixth uh, verse, he says, It is too small a thing for you to be my servant, to restore the tribes of Jacob, and to bring back those things of Israel I have kept. I will make you a light for the Gentiles. So here, here God, before Jesus, and before Paul, who went out as a missionary to the Gentiles in the New Testament, uh, he's already being prophesied that, that the Jewish people would not only be blessed, but then they would be a light to the Gentiles. They would be uh, people like us, uh, people like myself uh, of Irish and uh, Scottish descent would be blessed, um, uh, Gentiles. Um, and we would, we would have the blessing of God that may bring salvation to the end of the earth. And at that time, of course, Israel was the center of the earth, so, so America would be the end of the earth. And uh, we, we celebrated just recently, as we do every year, Columbus Day, who, dis, who was trying to prove that you can sail to the end of the earth and not fall off that end, that the world is round and not flat. And, uh, and we celebrate Columbus Day every October. Uh, it's a discovery day, but clear to the end of the earth, we're to be saved and, and we're to have God's blessing. And uh, that's prophesied again in uh, Isaiah. Uh, reasons to, to, for us, especially Gentiles, uh, to, to uh, proclaim a thanksgiving, that God had that in his plan. I love Jeremiah, and I want to quote from uh, the weeping prophet, too, uh, a lot of wisdom in what he said. And he talks about this covenant relationship, a father and a child, uh, a family unit. We, we celebrate Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is family. Um, I remember when Maria was just a little girl, we, we uh, we went to first to my sister Kay's parsonage for Thanksgiving, and then the year went around and we were ready to decide what to do, and we decided we would go back to Kay's uh, parsonage again. And, and uh, Maria reminded us all, just a little girl said, it's a family tradition. And uh, we were so happy that she recognized that. But this is the covenant, uh, Jeremiah writes, I will make with the house of Israel after that time. Uh, so, so every every uh, I go around town walking and I see uh, a sign. This house established in 1978. You know, people put their name up on their house like that. It's a house established. Well, this is the house of at this time of Israel. But uh, each of us are part of a family, part of a household. Uh, I will put my law in their minds uh, and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. The original um, pilgrims, as they came here, wanted freedom of worship. They wanted to obey God's laws as they understood them. They wanted to read the scriptures and pray to God uh, and, and uh, to recognize that in freedom, to be his people. And uh, Jeremiah, again, is saying that's exactly what God wants. He says, No longer will a man teach his neighbor or a man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest. Isn't that marvelous? There are some things which we might say is our common sense. We're not, we're not animals to the extent like, like a, a bird having instinct or a, a deer or bear at this time of the year having an instinct for survival, though isn't it marvelous that the deer have been jumping around for a couple weeks almost knowing that hunting season's coming before it arrived. And, uh, and preparing, I guess, having a place to hide and go to the thickest rhododendron someplace. But we don't, we don't know those things except that and at a deeper level we do know that there is a God. Uh, Augustine, who became a Saint Augustine, um, was, a, was quite, I guess, as a young man, um, a teenager who would be in all sorts of trouble. And, but he later on, after his salvation, said, we, we are all seeking our rest in God. We, and we're restless until we find that place. Uh, and he's right, of course. Um, we're all restless. And, and so Isaiah, uh, Jeremiah says, uh, we, we all know God at some level. We know that we're seeking, seeking something 
uh, something universal and something important. And, uh, and, he, and God is saying, all, of, all people will know me from the least to the greatest, God is declaring, for I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. Um, we all are in need of a redeemer. Um, we have, someday we won't need courts, we won't need policemen, but we do now, don't we? Because we're not safe without a protection, a, a nation of laws, a nation with a constitution. All of that is, is, is what we have now, but that's just a simple foretaste of someday when everyone will know what's right and what's wrong and will do what is right and what is wrong. And Jeremiah is prophesying that day. Uh, and we can be thankful that we live in a nation that is free, that is na that's well organized. As we talked about scriptures a few weeks ago, right after the election, uh, that we can have elections without people shooting each other, that we can decide things fairly uh, by vote and uh, and a process that's organized. So we so we have many things to be grateful for, including Jeremiah's statement here. Uh, now let's go on to some other blessings. Hosea, uh, a most persistent and positive prophet, uh, had said, "I will not carry out my fierce anger." He's speaking for God. Nor will I turn and devastate Ephraim, for I am God and not man, the Holy One among you. I will not come in wrath. So um, some people worry about that, and, and we have wars and rumors of war, and um, we even are watching TV programs uh, this week uh, about um, Israel and Gaza and, and fighting going on there and in many other places uh, in, in Africa and other places too. So. Uh, this is this is the way it is now, but uh, but uh, God would have a better plan for us, and it's part of a thanksgiving. We can pray to God for peace. We can pray to God for peace, and we can. And we, he has a plan, and this is part of His will uh, for us. Uh, that and then and also then that we would um, come to our senses, and not let God come to His wrath. I suspect that everyone would know as a parent. Um, that, that, that they don't want to be angry with their children, but, but they know that sometime they're going to have to punish their children, aren't they, out of fairness. They're going to have to say, okay, uh, the school's out and, and you have to play fairly, but if you start to fight too much, everyone has to go to their room, take a time out, and, uh, and then come back and we'll play other games together. But, you know, as a parent, you have to keep order. God is going to do that, but he, we don't want him to come in wrath. And Hosea is recognizing that. Uh, one of my favorites is from Joel, um, another prophet in the Old Testament. I will pour out my spirit on all people. Again, you know what a what a privileged place we live in America, where uh, so many people, uh, high majority, ninety percent or more, believe in God, uh, and uh, we certainly can feel the spirit of God in different ways. Uh, Joel was writing, "Your sons and daughters will prophesy." Your old men will dream dreams, and your young men will see visions. The older I get, the more I find the dreams comforting. Uh, but I remember as a young man having visions, visions for a TV program like this, now 37 years uh, continuing, or a, a clinic where we could uh, combine Christianity and medicine called Total Life Clinic, a, a vision, things like that. Uh, it would take me to Or Roberts Ministry, uh, Billy Graham uh, ministry, various other things, uh, uh, the parish house here in town. So many things have happened uh, where I would say there are visions that have turned into reality. And Joel was prophesying about that, that we can, we can ask God in prayer at a, at a Thanksgiving time like this to pour out his spirit on all people. And uh, if the president were making a proclamation today, and he probably is. I will probably read it in the paper tomorrow or, or on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, he'll probably be saying that, that uh, we need to, to actualize the vision of America, uh, a, a nation that's born on freedom and uh, on, on rights, uh, equal rights for all people, fairness. Uh, and that's part of, of um, and our sons and our daughters will prophesy. Our old men will dream dreams. Our young men will see visions. Uh, so Joel writes about reasons that we can certainly be thankful. Uh, Zephaniah, another prophet, has uh, in the third chapter, the ninth verse says, Then I will purify the lips of the people, 
that all of them may call on the name of the Lord and serve him shoulder to shoulder. And one of the things I like about America as a melting pot is that we have all religions, all people are coming together and working together shoulder to shoulder. Um, we can, um, I've, I've had the privilege of working within the medical profession and working with, uh, at the VA, I, I've said many times, it's like working at the United Nations. Uh, we would have an Afghan doctor working beside a Pakistani doctor and they would be getting along. We'd have a Pakistani doctor and an Indian doctor working side by side, getting along. We'd have a Jewish doctor and a Palestinian doctor working side by side and getting along. We'd have various um, folks uh, like myself, uh, United Methodist, working with a Catholic, getting along. Uh, all of that uh, working out uh, in, in a way that uh, we're working shoulder to shoulder, we're working toward a common good, in this case our patients. Uh, called upon to, to treat the sick and uh, and do that together, uh, but but you can you can pick other areas. This happens. Uh, uh, all these companies that make America great uh, are companies that where the ideas have come from around the world, and people come together to work uh, together, uh, and uh, we can be we can purify our lips. Uh, this is a, a prayer. Um, part of this is to say the right thing and speak in kindness. Uh, uh, you know, not not uh, say the harsh and evil things that sometimes are in our heart, uh, but but uh, to be careful what we say, uh, and then and then work together. Another uh, uh, Zechariah prophecy in the second chapter, uh, verse ten through eleven: A shout and be glad, O daughter of Zion, referring to the Israel nation, for I am coming, and I will live among you. Many nations will be joined with the Lord in that day and will become my people. So, so there is a second coming. And uh, we can, if we go back to our, uh, our proclamation of, of the presidents, uh, we have, a, we've been all working toward a more perfect union. Uh, the, uh, uh, George Washington recognized that, that we have a duty among all nations uh, to acknowledge Almighty God, and and uh, His protection, His favor, uh, but even as we are united, and George Washington is saying this, we need to uh, be humble and we need to uh, exercise our freedoms with due care, and and the process goes on, and it uh, goes on from Thanksgiving to Thanksgiving as we as we improve. Uh, the uh, Abraham Lincoln said that that our nation was being sorely tested whether it could exist whether any nation so conceived and so dedicated could stand a civil war like we were having. And he called us to Thanksgiving. He said, he said, remember our fruitful years. Remember our healthful skies. Uh, he's talking about uh, what a blessed place we have here as a nation and, and how we can, uh, we can work together for great things. We were not working together, but but he was prophesying that we can, uh, that we can do this. If we humble ourselves, if we pray to God, we give thanksgiving for what we have, and then we can build on that. And and uh, he he said that God will give us gracious gifts. Indeed, gra grace, we've, we've talked about grace uh, many times, uh, is unmerited favor. God will do what a father would love to do, even if we don't merit it. Uh, if my children, I'm happy to feed this uh, Thanksgiving and, and um, happy to have them home. Uh, but, but even if I had a child that, uh, that I, I was not in my favor at the moment, I would still feed that child. I would still clothe that child. I'd still shelter that child. Uh, you know, a gracious God will do those things for all of us. But he'll lead us to a new vision. And uh, he described, Abraham Lincoln described God as beneficent. Uh, wanting to benefit us. And uh, so, so there are many things we can talk about uh, in the scriptures and, and uh, in our foundation about, about Thanksgiving. <clears throat> I want to finish up here with uh, a few more thoughts about this uh, because uh, we already know the end of the story. I want to go to a few scriptures in Revelation as I did at the last time when we were talking about the election and, and uh, working together as a nation. Um, 
in Revelation, the fifth chapter, the 13th verse, I, I think of all creatures, and, and uh, at this time I think of the deer, I think of the uh, squirrel. I was out walking today, and the squirrels gathering their nuts, trying to prepare for their winter. All creatures, of course, we, we, we can be blessed as a nation of people uh, made in the image of God, but all creatures are involved too. Uh, so Revelations is about this. It says, Then I heard every creature in heaven and earth and under the earth and on the sea, so the fish, the, the whale, everything involved, and all that is in them singing, and this will be marvelous, won't it, someday, to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. So uh, everyone giving thanksgiving someday. Uh, this is a prophecy. Uh, we imagine um, heaven on earth. We, just, we speak of West Virginia as almost heaven. And uh, having, having traveled the world and uh, seen other places, I can see that, that whoever came up with that phrase in the beginning was right. Uh, we are blessed among all nations, and West Virginia is blessed among all states. Uh, several years ago, uh, we were going to visit Maria in Africa, and we were told that it would be dry, but I had no idea how dry it would be, and that the Sahara Desert is, is expanding rapidly, engulfing the equivalent of whole states every year as it moves down through Africa. But we were in Tanzania where they still have a water supply left, but it's very limited and, and um, it's getting more scarce every year. The animals have to run hundreds of miles to get to from one pool of water to another. And it's very, very dry, dust clouds everywhere. Well, I took postcards of West Virginia to show people. I didn't, I didn't, uh, wasn't trying to you know, show, sh brag too much, but I, I just wanted them to see some uh, postcard pictures of West Virginia to, to talk about where we live. Anyway, the people picked up on the water supply. I had pictures of rivers and waterfalls, and they just could not believe it. Uh, we're just blessed so bountifully uh, with many water supplied, many things at all like this. And uh, so all creatures uh, will sing God's praise uh, under the sea and, um, and in the air. And finally, let me uh, quote one more time from Revelations later on, the 21st chapter, the 25th verse. On no day will heaven's gate be shut, for there will be no night there. So we can give thanksgiving this year, even though we still feel the night. Uh, we still, when we lay quietly in our bed at night, we may secretly say, this is, uh, there's more to come. This is a there's been a hard year. Uh, there, there's, there has to be more. Uh, we need more blessing. Uh, but, but we can pray and give thanksgiving and, and, and pray, I think, uh, with, uh, with faith, just as the scripture writes, on, on some day the gates of heaven will be open and there will be no night there. It'll be open for all. Uh, and it's, um, it's a truly a blessing uh, to be on this show one more year. Uh, and we're going to have more programs, some great music coming up uh, in the Christmas season, and many reasons to celebrate. But for now, a blessed Thanksgiving to everyone. We'll see you next week.